Okay, calculus folks, looks like we got another snow day. And in class, we're going to work on this recap worksheet of 6.1 and 6.2, which is area between curves and volume of weird rotated areas. Um, so I was going to do a problem from the front and a problem from the back to kind of get you started. And when you're doing area between curves, it's a lot like what you just did on your quiz. Um, except instead of just an integral where you know the numbers it starts at and ends at and of just one thing you always have to do the integral of the function that is on top minus the function that's on bottom but it's not like you have to treat it any differently your rule is still the same you you know raise the power up one divide by the new exponent um, the difference is you just have to do the subtraction first, and you have to do a little work to get those two numbers there. So let's deal with, actually, you need a picture for for either one of those cases. That's the thing you got to do with these. Otherwise, you don't know which graph is on top, really. So for this problem, I'm going to graph both of them. And I'm trying to find out two things. One, which graph is on top, and two, uh, where do they meet? Okay, so if I did a little sketch of that here, we got kind of a parabola shape down here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be good enough to tell those two things that I just said. So I'm trying to find this trapped area. Kind of looks like a, I don't know, teardrop almost. Looks more like a evil cartoon eye. Okay, so we need to find that x value and that x value. And to do that you need a graphing calculator. Um, so we're going to find our intersection points. For this you hit enter, enter, and then your guess matters. You got to hit close to where you want to get. So I usually go two decimal places. So this is x equals 0.79. And then you'll go to the other one. You might need a little more zoom out. Let me see if it does it if it's off screen. I don't think it does. Let me scroll up here close to it. Oh, it did. It jumped off screen. So there's the intersection point. X equals 3.79. Um, I can also tell at this time which graph is on top the entire time. Um, and that is your straight line. So I want to make sure when I write my equation that I put the 3x plus 1 here and then I subtract off the other guy, the x squared minus 2. And then my two numbers go here. You put the lower number in bottom, 0.79, and the bigger number on top, 3.79. After that, it's just a matter of you know combining like terms. Make sure that minus sign goes to both of those. So you'll have negative x squared plus 3x, and then I'll have 1 minus negative 2, which is plus 3. All right. So the numbers are a little uglier just because these usually don't come out to be super nice. But the problem's not super difficult um, after we've done stuff like that. So we're going to take the power up one and divide by the new exponent. This is our rule. And remember, whenever you do the rule, you get rid of the integral sign. So I'm finding the area trapped between these two curves. Um, this was negative x squared. Now it's negative x to the third over 3. This was 3x, now it's 3x squared over 2. And this was a 3, now it's a 3x. So now, just like before, you're going to plug in this guy, and then plug in this guy and subtract off the bottom one. So we're going to have, um, make sure you use parentheses on this one, otherwise it'll come out wrong. Okay, so I'm going to do that real quick, come back in a sec, and look at what we got as our answer, see if it makes sense. All right, so I did the math on this, and this one came out to 14.76, this came out to 3.14, and you do the subtraction, and the total trapped area is 11.63. Keep some extra places rounded at the end. Um, and that's kind of how you do it. The one thing you got to worry about 
on those problems, area between curves, is if you ever got a shape that kind of changed which one was on top. So imagine I had this guy and kind of a line that cuts through this way. Got to be kind of careful because for this chunk, the curvy guy's on top. So you'd have to do one integral from here to here with the curvy guy on top. And then you'd have a second shape um, where the straight line's on top. So you'd have to do a second integral from here to here with the straight guy on top. So it's like twice the amount of work. Um, and you got to check your endpoints, find them the same way we just found that one, and then add your two answers together. Okay, so one last thing, we'll do one of the problems on the, one of the volume problems. Okay, so here, we want the volume of the solid rotated about the x-axis for the area trapped by the curves. So once again, it would be beneficial to have a picture of these. So here's an equation, 7 minus x squared. We take a graph of it, and it says it wants the area of this guy. So we're going to take a look at it. Oops, we'll do a little sketch. So it goes up here. Looks like it goes past 2. So I want, there we go. That's a pretty good sketch. So it's going to go like this, and you're going to chop it from here to here because I want it trapped by all three. So I got my curve here, this line's on the left, this line's on the right, and I'm going to take this shape and I'm going to wrap it around the x-axis. So if you look at it, it's kind of like, I don't know, it kind of looks like a mountain shape right now. But when I spin it around the x-axis, it's going to go down here and have like a mirror image, but it's going to be a 3D shape, so you can give it a little roundness. Kind of looks like a roller skate wheel if you looked at it from the side. It actually would have the shape of a roller skate wheel if I were able to undo it. It's just a solid little wheel here. All right, so either way, um, remember with volume questions, it's not. It's not the exact same thing. It's just a, a morph of what we were doing on these problems. Since you're spinning it around and you're adding up a bunch of little disks, you're going to go, instead of just the integral, you're going to go pi times the integral of your radius squared. And since we're rotating around the x-axis, that's a dx there. You'll see later we'll rotate around the y and things change a little. But um, you still need your two numbers here, and that's your lowest x, negative 2, and your highest x, 2. So that's easy. That's kind of like before. And in this problem, there's only one radius. Okay, so now you just usually have a little work to actually square that. The problem's actually, you know, a tiny bit of work. So we're going to go pi. I'm not taking the integral yet. I'm not doing my trick. So I'm going to write this out for you guys at home there. Um, and then you're going to FOIL it. So you got first, outside is minus 7x squared, inside is minus 7x squared, and then last times last is plus x to the fourth. Okay, you can write that in the other order. I don't really want to. Just don't forget your pi is kind of hanging out the whole time. So I'm going to raise each power up. Raise it up one, divide by the new exponent. Raise it up one, divide by the new exponent. Raise it up one, divide by the new exponent. And then you're going to plug in a 2. Still got this pi hanging out here. You're going to plug in a 2. Then you're going to plug in a negative 2. Then you're going to find your answer, and then multiply it by pi. Okay. So let me pause this, do some of the math behind the scenes, and then take a look at it. Okay, so then you got a 67.06 repeating and a negative, but it's minus a negative. So really, it's just that last answer times 2. Um, and that's 134.13 repeating times pi. Don't forget the times pi at the very end. And you get a volume of 
421.39 units cubed. All right, and that is the volume of this weird um, skateboard wheel or roller skate wheel. So anyway, it's kind of cool. Just got to remember the pi r squared, and sometimes you got to do some work like foiling. Like this problem, you're going to have to foil also. It's just a little uglier um, with those, but it'll be a pretty similar idea. All right, hope that helps, and you guys finish up the rest, and I will see you the next time we're in class.